I don't think it's, well, clearly something went wrong. Uh, we know that to begin with. Uh, but I don't think it's fair right now to point fingers or cast aspersions on any part of our intelligence community. We need to get more facts. Um, we depend on a series of defenses, on perimeter defenses, and one of them is airport security. Clearly there was a lapse of airport security here. Um, but what more happened, uh, what signals we might have missed, is too early to tell right now. Uh, what we can say is we as a nation have been working very hard for the last five or ten years to improve our responses to terrorism. We've made considerable progress. Clearly, we have to do more. If you were still uh, involved in your former role as the spokesperson for the Defense Department at the Pentagon, what would you be advising your bosses to do today and in the coming days? I'd advise them to do what they've done to be forthright with the American public, to present information as soon as they're certain Mr. Bacon, Mr. Bacon, my apologies. I have to interrupt you. We're going to go to New York now. Mayor Rudy Giuliani with a news conference. Let's listen in. Good morning. We uh, just completed a, uh, a long uh, meeting with uh, all of the agencies of the city, state, governor, participated in it, and the Port Authority, so that we can work on the things that we have to do today to, first of all, focus our efforts on recovering as many people as we can and save lives. Second, uh, try to begin the, the removal of debris to that area of the city, which is going to be a task that goes on for at least two or three weeks. And then uh, focus on the other issues that are of importance to the city, make sure that food comes into the city, make sure that uh, people are able to go about their lives and are taken care of in the hospitals, and to try to bring the city back to normal as soon as possible. And we're going to aim to try to do that uh, for uh, the rest of Manhattan uh, starting tomorrow. And we'll be focusing on that and, and uh, trying to accomplish that uh, all day today. Uh, we, have had, we have been successful in recovering at least one other person, a Port Authority police officer. We're hopefully going to be able to recover a, a fourth one. And we're in the process of doing everything we can to try to locate uh, other people. And that'll be the major focus of our attention. We also appeal to uh, uh, since some came forward late yesterday and uh, last evening. Uh, if they do, please contact the police department and the FBI, because it could be of enormous help in the investigation of the case. Uh, we're, we're going to uh, try to open schools tomorrow. We, we're hopeful that we'll be able to, we, we certainly will be able to do it in the entire city. And we'll be working on a plan for the maximum number of schools that we can open on the east side of Manhattan, particularly the lower east side of Manhattan. Con Edison is working, uh, I think, as uh, intensely as they possibly can to try to get power restored. It's going to take some time, and we're bringing generators in. Uh, the governor made available to us uh, group of generators that we've moved to Randall's Island, and uh, we will be using them in, the, in that area of the east side that needs uh, generator power, because they may need it for quite some time. We were able to move 120 dump trucks out of the city last night, which will give you a sense of the work that was done overnight. Uh, so some of the debris has already been removed. More of it is being removed, and it will be done by barge all throughout the day today. Uh, the subway system is operating in all of the city, but uh, below 14th Street, and largely because right now we have that closed. Uh, so if you're in any of the other four boroughs, public transportation is normal, the subways are normal, the buses are normal. If you're in Manhattan, the subways are going to be working uh, to 14th Street, and then for those that go underneath, they'll just go straight out to Brooklyn. As soon as we can get that area of the city open, however, there will be subway service there, except for the one, two, and th three lines, the West Side IRT below 34th Street, because of the collapse that took place. And um, again, we ask all New Yorkers to uh, to cooperate and to try to help each other. There there are going to be a lot of people today who need help and need assistance, either because of the uh, fact that they know people that were lost in this terrible tragedy, or because they're just frightened of what may happen. Uh, if you could comfort them and help them, 
and assist them, particularly elderly people, that, that might be a way in which you, you, you can contribute. And uh, we're getting very, very close cooperation from the state, from the federal government. I think people in New York, the best way they can uh, deal with this right now is not only to deal with their own grief, which we all feel and have, but to show that we're not going to be in any way affected by this, that we're not going to be cowered by it, that we're not afraid, that we're going to go about our business and lead normal lives uh, and not let these cowards affect us in any way uh, like they're trying to do, which is to instill fear in us. Governor? Mayor, thank you. As the mayor indicated, the focus right now is still on uh, search and rescue and the hopes that we can uh, uh, get other people out of the debris and save more lives. We have, uh, at last count, 18 different search and rescue teams down there. And I want to thank my colleagues. Uh, we have eight from Connecticut that Governor Rowland sent in, others from around the country. Uh, we have a specialized team coming that Governor Calderon is sending from Puerto Rico. And it's this type of support from around the country uh, that is allowing us to get through this. Uh, I have to tell you, I was down at the scene last night, and Mayor, your police and fire uh, not only were heroes at the beginning, but they're still heroes. They're down there under enormous personal strain and risk. Uh, I saw them at the ground zero while a high rise was on fire uh, right across the street that could have collapsed, and they are risking their lives uh, to try to save their friends and their colleagues and the New Yorkers who are still trapped. And uh, we have to thank them, say a prayer for them. Uh, this is a time for rescue, it's a time for commitment, but it's also a time to reflect and grieve for those who uh, didn't have their parents come home last night or for those who still <coughs> might be lost. And uh, we will get through this because, as the mayor indicated, New Yorkers come together in times of crisis, and we've seen tremendous spirit uh, donating blood, volunteering at hospitals, helping us to get through this. And uh, we have um, done everything we could to be supportive. We have National Guard troops here now. Uh, we are uh, mobilizing fire departments from uh, Westchester and Rockland that are backing up in the Bronx. We're mobilizing fire departments from Nassau and Suffolk that will help uh, in some of the outer boroughs on Long Island. Uh, but what we don't need are people just simply coming in to volunteer. We have the hotlines, we have the organization, we have tremendous coordination between the city and the state and the federal government. So people who want to exercise their expertise, whether they're firefighters, they should contact their fire department. If they're EMTs or nurses, they should contact the hotline that we have set up at the state uh, where we've already had about 10,000 calls. So uh, this is a tragic uh, episode in American history, but New Yorkers will get through this. America will get through this. We will not be intimidated. We will not lose our freedom. What is the status of the World Trade Center? There's one other thing that we, we, we should do. These are, these are the, uh, the flight recorder boxes that the firefighters and the police officers and the rescuers are, look, are looking for. And we're going to, uh, we'd, we'd like, we'll, we'll give you copies of this. We'd like you to put it out as broadly as possible. We'll also, we're giving copies to all the rescue people and recovery people so that they can try to find them. They'll, altogether, there'll be four, two for each airplane. And that's, that's what they look like, except it'll be obviously covered with soot and, and, and dirt. But there are a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of people involved in the recovery and relief effort who know what they're looking for, and then there'll be some that don't. So if we can give those out, it would be very important. This morning's meeting was devoted to the relief and recovery effort, largely. This afternoon, we're, we're going to focus on the economic recovery of the city and um, work with the hotels, the restaurants, the real estate industry. Uh, we're going we're to rebuild. We're not only going to rebuild, we're going to come out of this stronger than we were before. And in addition to having uh, wonderful people in New York, as the governor indicated, we also have the strongest business community of any place in the world. You know, we're going to call upon them, and we're going to need their help. But uh, we're going to come out of this emotionally stronger, politically stronger, much closer together as a city, and we're going to come out of this economically stronger, too. And Mayor, we're going to start working on that uh, right away. What's the status of the World Financial Center? There appears what? to be a fire burning across the street now, fairly significant. I, be I believe the, one, one the, 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 FBI. the smoke from the uh, World Financial Center was from a defective generator that the fire department uh, worked on. There was there was no major fire at the World Financial Center. 
There's a statement from the FBI. The FBI. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll make a brief statement. Uh, obviously, as you all know, this is a pending criminal investigation. I can tell you that it is being coordinated by Director Mueller at FBI headquarters. <clears throat> we have essentially all 56 field offices in the country involved in this. There are obvious, uh, but probably primarily a, a dozen offices that where the uh, airplanes were hijacked and left. Uh, uh, we're doing a lot of things as far as at those particular airports, checking on the planes, uh, checking with crews, cleaning people. All of that uh, is ongoing as we speak. Uh, probably the major thrust that we are doing right now is we do have the manifest. We're reaching out to all of the families, interviewing them. Uh, and the, the primary purpose of that is obviously to get any information. Uh, you have had, and the media has reported, there's been a number of calls made from these various planes. Uh, we would like to put out to the people if they haven't reported that to law enforcement to call their local law enforcement or FBI so we can get a hold of it. The obvious thrust for us right at this particular point in time is to identify the number and uh, the individuals who were in fact hijacked. So that is the major thrust. Uh, we will be doing a crime scene. Uh, the primary thing is, as the mayor just pointed out to you, is the black boxes. We're working with the, the city, but again, that's going to follow the search and rescue. Uh, ongoing intensive investigation. That's all I have at this time. Can you say anything about the arrest in Florida and the seizure of a car in Florida uh, and the seizure of a car? We, we have a number of leads that we're running around uh, the country. Uh, to the, a number of these, uh, I'm not going to get into specifics other than uh, it's my understanding we did detain some individuals over in New Jersey. Uh, essentially, uh, we are finding out that that is not all that relevant at this particular point in time, but uh, I'm going to limit my comments. That is going to any of the investigative uh, news pertaining to this investigation will come out of Washington, well, D.C. Is, is, is there anyone in custody at this time? Is there anyone in custody at this time? Other than the ones that I just mentioned to you, there are some over in New Jersey. That's Mr. the Mr. only Mr. Mon, can you tell us, can you explain to us, Mr. Mon, how airports, airlines that have been hijacked could come into the New York area without being detected by radar, without the route that they were taken being questioned by people in Transcon or radar? Uh, I can't really answer that. That would be FAA and NTSB. Uh, I'm not going to get in. I don't know the answer to that. Did you have any warning at all that there were hijacked planes in the air? Uh, no, I, obvious, no I, I, I can tell you that this was a surprise, as the mayor and the governor has pointed out. It was a surprise, a shock. Uh, we had no uh, forewarning of this happening. Mr. Mon, there were reports that the, there were reports that the FBI was, was investigating a hijacked plane just before the first plane hit the World Trade Center. Is that true? No, I'm not aware of that. Do you have any, any sense of responsibility of the range of potentially of people that were in the World Trade Centers and that are still missing or presumed dead? What is, what is the, even the conceivable range that, that there is at this point? As, as I, the numbers that we're working on are in the thousands. Obviously, we hope that's not, that's not the case, but the, est the estimate would be for, each, for both of the buildings that uh, although building number, number two had a chance to clear out. A lot of people probably cleared out of building number two. Building number one had some time to clear out, but there were areas of it that were affected. The best estimate that we can make, relying on the Port Authority and just every, everyone else that has experience with this, is that there'll be a, f a few thousand people left in each building. Mr. Mayor, you talked about. And then the our, our, our recovery relief efforts and our work with the medical examiner are premised on those kinds of numbers. Mayor, Mr. Can you explain if there are thousands of bodies and there were 120 trucks of debris taken out, where are the bodies if there's only 41 confirmed fatalities? Where are the rest of them? A lot of the debris that was taken out are uh, structural things that were in the way of the relief effort. I don't know that the debris was actually taken out of the actual uh, buildings that fell. But if, you, if uh, some of you haven't been down there, but the area is was very constricted by lots of structural damage and things that were in the street so a lot of the debris that was taken away i suspect was the debris that blocks 
the entry and exit of uh, 